Tonight, the fallout continues over President Bush commuting Scooter Libby's sentence in the CIA leak case. On the campaign trail, Bill Clinton took aim at the current administration, saying this to an IRA reporter. You've got to understand, I think that this is consistent with their philosophy. They believe that they should be able to do what they want to do, and it, it, that the law is a minor obstacle. Coming from a guy who granted some pretty controversial pardons, is this political hypocrisy? Joining us now from Washington, Democratic cons consultant Bob Beckel. Hey, Bob, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Sir. Oh, come on now. Chutzpah, chutzpah. How much chutzpah does Bill Clinton have accusing any other president of being above the law? Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, hypocrisy is not uh, isolated to Bill Clinton when it comes to presidential politics. Let me make that one point. Sure. I think, it was a little bit, I think it was a little bit unfortunate since she had already made a statement about Libby. And since this is the first time the two of them, Bill and Hillary, have been campaigning together, probably better to let her have done it alone. But he did it. But look. Yeah, because he couldn't help himself. He can't keep his mouth shut. Well, yeah, well, I mean, look, which, can you name me one politician that can? I mean, I, I, that's, that, that goes with the territory. But look, the fact is, a couple of things here. One of the things the Republicans talk about in, in Clinton is the pardon of Mark Rich, who, who was probably the most uh, controversial of the pardons. Who was his lo lawyer? His lawyer was Scooter Libby. So, I mean, it, it gets a little bit hypocrisy. The hypocrisy goes on both sides. The, but in the final analysis, you know what I think? I think the Republicans are going to use it against the, uh, the Clintons, Hillary Clinton, anyway, so you might as well get it out while you can. Well, I don't know. Are you saying that it's, that it's some sort of like unfair political opportunism to bring these things up, to bring up the fact that the White House was used to sell pardons for so long, and also that the disparity between the Bush White House and the Clinton White House on how these things were used? Bush has used these very judiciously. He has not abused uh, his power in these senses when it's absolutely clear that's exactly what Bill Clinton did. Well, if you think this is judicious to bypass your own Justice Department and the guidelines, and to do he this left in place. He left in place the probation he, and the well, fine. That, the stain that's, is that's there. Right. He's not removing that. That's right. And I'll tell you, I'll eat my hat if he doesn't get a full pardon First by the time, time this is over. First time offender. Well, listen. Let, let, wait a second. This has become emblematic. That is Scooter Libby of the Iraq War. That's why it's such a big well, what, deal. What do you mean? And what does Dick that mean? Cheney. What, what do you does mean? That mean? Everything, everything about this case against him centered on issues concerning the Iraq War and the intelligence that got us into the Iraq war, which was flawed intelligence. Now, from a Democratic standpoint, the reason they're jumping on this so strongly is that there has been nobody else caught up in this except for Scooter Lee, which I don't think is fair, because I think Dick Cheney ought to be in front of a grand jury myself. But if you're going to think what? about one pardon, this is one that has more uh, sort of political ramifications than any other pardon that George Bush could give. Look, a lot of fair observers, even the two of the Democratic consultants that I had uh, on this show when I substituted on Friday, Kirsten Powers and Laura Schwartz, not exactly Bush water carriers, believe that what Bush did was absolutely, quote, the right thing to do. I think what the wrong thing to do is to give Scooter Libby the length of time that he got in the first place. I, I think that was excessive. But if you're going to do this, First of all, Wait, if so you George agree Bush, with the Bush White House? No, I don't agree. I don't agree with the way it was done. He didn't use his own Justice Department guidelines. The Justice Department didn't know about it. There was nothing about this thing that was done in the normal course of events. Now, we know, you and I both know what happened. Dick Cheney went to him. It was getting close to the time that Libby was going to jail. Who are we kidding here? I mean, I was born a night, but not last night. And, and I'm telling you something. This thing was done to keep Scooter from going into the door to the jail next week. There, you know, again, fair observers will talk about how uh, Patrick Fitzgerald did not have a case here. And it, it was, we, know, we all know who leaked. It was Richard Armitage, correct? Yeah, it was Richard. By the way, are you, are so you why should Libby by, be why should Libby be punished for that? I don't know. I just want to know how we say when you say fair observers, I, I, I take it I'm not included in that, in that group. So <laughs> Apparently I'll accept not, that. Bob. I'll accept that. I, I mean, I know I'm a partisan. Uh, but. <laughs> But look, the, the, the fact of the matter is, you could argue about what Fitzgerald did. He did it. It was, and, and Libby did, in fact, lie about this. Now, I can't help the fact that the guy lied to the FBI and that Fitzgerald pursued him maybe too aggressively. And he should have done this, or he should have brought the armor to the well, but it didn't happen that it way. Looks, look, and that's just the way things work. And the bottom line, though, Bob, is that Bill Clinton has no place criticizing President Bush on his use of pardons. I, I, think, I think that probably is a little bit of wishful thinking. On hey, your well, thank you.